Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. This is part five now in the rural renovation and in today's video, we're gonna be installing the unbending cylinder and the accumulator. Okay, so I've got the accumulator flipped upside down now and the actual water connection to it is right at the very bottom. So you can see here we've got this um, manufactured elbow that is built on the bottom. So I need to take this cap off and then Stuart Turner provides you with a shark bite fitting to install on the bottom, which is 28 mil. So these are more commonly found in the USA but as it's manufactured there, that's why it comes with it. So yeah, just get this wound in and then I will pop some 28 mil through this hole here into the fitting and then we can work on it from there. Right, so first thing we've had to do is get the cylinders in the cupboard location. So the area we're putting them in is really tight. So we've had to try and gain a little bit of extra space. So we've removed the skirting on one side. So when we're finished, that can just be chopped back in neatly there. No one will ever know. And then I've just had to adjust some central heating pipe work down there on the left. So that's given us at least a bit of an air gap between the two. So when you buy a Stuart Turner accumulator, they will give you this monoblock control. So this incorporates your non-return valve, your pressure reducer valve, and also you've got a gauge on the incoming main and also on the outgoing side. So you can see the difference in your water pressure. So the plan is the cold water main is gonna come in top left hand side of this cupboard. We're gonna mount this control somewhere up there. And then from there, we're gonna branch off and we're gonna fill up our unbending cylinder, passing the pipework through the wall up here and then popping back through the wall down there. So branching off of that same pipe, that's where you need to install the accumulator. So we'll run this pipework up this wall here and then that will tee into the pipework that's coming off the bottom of this control. So what we've actually done in the end is Bailey has cut the pipework up in the room below so we can run all new pipework up just to make it a little bit neater. So um, we've got here your balance cold, which comes off here. This is your cold feed to the cylinder, which pokes through the wall. And then it comes through the wall here, so it's all nice and neat. And the majority of the pipework can stay where the heating controls are in the room adjacent to this. Um, got a hot water drawer here, so obviously red isolation valve for that. And then again, we had the old hot water distribution pipe work that was coming up from below, so we just joined onto that. To cut a T in here, new bit of pipe, and then that will feed the rest of the house. So the cylinder we're going to be installing today is manufactured by Jewel, and for those of you that don't know, Jewel actually manufacture the majority of the unbended cylinders on the market today. So brands that you see such as Stealth Flow or RM cylinders they're actually all made by the same people so it's worth shopping around this one in silver I would say is a lot better quality than some of their sister brands that they put on the market and it was a little bit cheaper as well so it's worth shopping around some of the cylinders that you can buy especially from my like Valen they come with like spigots for the connections and you have to put your own brass connection on to where it as these you just sort of got the compression uh, joint that you put on, so it's nice and easy. 
So the reason we're installing the accumulator in this property is because we've got multiple bathrooms and we want to keep the pressure balanced across all outlets when they're open. So for those of you who don't know how a accumulator works, it's air one side, water the other. And what happens is when you open up your cold water main, it pressurizes this vessel, pushes against a rubber diaphragm and then stores the pressure inside of it. And then when you open up an outlet, it will then release the pressure, keeping the water balanced uh, for a period of time. So once that pressure is diminished within the cylinder, it then recharges itself. So depending on the volume of water, which your cylinder can hold, you'll find it will take longer to recharge. But we've got a 250 litre cylinder and a 300 litre accumulator. So although the accumulator in turn is bigger than the cylinder, it actually only holds about 180 litres. So, but that's still enough for three, four showers easily. And then you've got the time for it to recharge. So perfectly suitable for this property. So we've actually got two pressure reducing valves up here now so we still have to install the one for the cylinder which is the one on the right so that will maintain the manufacturer's warranty and it also incorporates the pressure relief valve so we still have to fit it although technically this is pretty much doing the same thing this is doing so they're both reducing the water uh, to a free bar if necessary and they both got strainers both got non-return valves the only difference really is this one on the right it's got the pressure relief out, but again to keep the manufacturers wrong here we have to install it so just to show you how the accumulators pipes up this here is your cold water main coming down and then what happens is it's teeing off here and feeding the balance cold and also the cold feed to the hot water so in turn the hot water cylinder so it's just branched in here so the accumulator is just teed in to your cold water main and almost acts as like a big balloon it pushes the water out when you need it. Okay, so we're pretty much done for the day now, and we're gonna be returning tomorrow to um, neaten everything up, wire wall everything, and also we've got a bit of pipe work to do in this cupboard. So uh, down here we've got a flow return, cold water feed to the cylinder. And then up here we've got the pressure relief valve from the multifunctional valve and also the cold water main so that will fill the feed cylinder so that pipe there will just loop all the way down join in here just to keep it neat in that cylinder cupboard so yeah make good progress and yeah look forward to getting it done so just to show you the alterations that we've done in the first floor just so we can renew the pipe work coming up where the unbended cylinders are. I um, just tidied it up a bit because originally we was gonna leave the old pipe work poking through, but actually we can do all the teeing in up here and make a bit of a neater job of it. So all the units in the utility room have been taken out now, so we've been able to access this cold water main. So what we've done is we've um, neatened it up and joined back into the existing cold feed to the kitchen sink and the utility room sink. Obviously that's got to stay. And then this new 22mm feed is going to be the cold feed to our accumulator and unbent cylinder. Okay, so we're up in the loft now and I just wanted to show you the conversion work we've done to change this from a low pressure system to a high pressure system. So what we've just done is we have removed two cold water storage tanks which were up there at a high level. And what we've done is this pipe here with the isolation valve on this used to feed the cold water cylinder, so uh, the hot water cylinder, sorry. So the water would go down this pipe here and fill it up from the cold water storage tank. But what we're actually going to do is backfill it up through here, and then we've linked it across to our cold water distribution pipe work that was from the cold water tank. So this actually now becomes our balanced cold. So we'll obviously have an isolation valve down in the cupboard where the tanks go in, but we've got one up here as well, and then what we needed to do was just cap the hot water vent pipe which was there so that used to go up and over and now that's capped and then the cold water main which feeds the old cold water storage tank is capped down there so pretty similar to what you do with a combi conversion we're just linking everything together um, here we've just added two AAVs there was two front vents which 
is on the central heater, so I've just put um, two AABs on there, which will help when we commission. Right, it's the next day and unfortunately I've not been able to get on site but Bailey's cracked on and he's done all the pipe work that passes through the walls so he's made a really neat job of it, all the isolation valves are on, all the copper white looks great and it's all been tidied up so that's us pretty much done now in this manifold cupboard. Our next job is to fill up the hot and cold so the guys can close up in the bathrooms and other than that we're going to be installing the new navian oil boiler in the garage and we're also going to be wiring it all in ourselves so i'll get that on camera and put that in one of the next videos that's coming up so thank you very much for tuning into this video if you would like comment and subscribe i'd really appreciate it and hopefully see you on the next one